I'm the book baron. Welcome in everyone. So today I'm doing my July slash August TBR and I'm doing something wild with my hands for some reason. So because I'm down to like a once a week schedule with uploading, I just feel like it doesn't really make sense to be doing a TBR every month. It just eats into like other things I could be doing. And honestly, I haven't been good about sticking to my TBRs anyway. So it kind of feels like a pointless video sometimes. So I'm hoping this gives me a little bit more freedom to just mood reader, embrace the mood readeriness. Words are great. Yeah, I'm, I'm just hoping that this gives me a little bit more freedom to just kind of like pick up whatever's like striking my mood because let me tell you, if something's not holding my attention, I cannot get through it. With that in mind, these are all the hopeful that I may read in the next couple of months. And if I don't, it's not my fault. I was born this way. All right, first up, we have Keep You To Myself by Brianne Denae. So this is on KU. It's a first in a series, I believe is interconnected. I think it's just a contemporary romance from what I can tell. So Sunovi has had kind of a tough life. It sounds like he grew up like maybe in the foster care system and he really is just trying to find peace and stability, but that's kind of always been chaotic for him. He really tries to just like keep to himself, keep hustling, mind his own business. And he kind of gets labeled as like standoffish and rude because of that, because he's like not really open to sharing with other people. That's until he runs into Torrin and she is an assertive woman. So she is going to break down those walls because she's decided she wants in. I picked this one up, honestly, because I love this cover. I think it's stunning. The color palette, gorgeous. I love that kind of like crackly pattern. Does that make any sense? That staticky look that it's got and the woman on the cover. Oh, anyway, all I have to say, I just thought the cover was really gorgeous. It really just spoke to me. And I saw the ratings on Goodreads and it was like, it had an average rating of like a 4.7. I think it was like a thousand or 2000 ratings. That's insane, especially with that many ratings. I was shocked. So I was like, I definitely have to give this a shot. If it has that good of a cover and that good of a rating, like I want to know what's going on with that. I'm going to grab that on audio from my library. Next up, we have Kevin joining us. Well, that wasn't what I was gonna say. But next up I have Pas de Trois, which is by Bryn Ford. So this is the third book in the Four Family series. I think this is the last book for this romance. And then I think the fourth one is actually an interconnected, although it might be linear in timeline. I'm not, I'm not hundred percent. I'm still gonna read that one. We're rambling, we're rambling, we're moving on. First book is Counts of Eight. This is a captive romance and it is extremely dark, extremely dark. The romance is between two captives and Kevin found his catnip toy. Why are you like this? Whatever. So I don't spoil any things. I'm gonna give you the synopsis of Counts of Eight, which is the first book. So Anya has been serving the four families, which are an alliance of like four organized crime families. And she is a source of their entertainment. They have quarterly meetings. And so they at these meetings have different performance slaves. All right, Kevin is being extremely needy. I just had to dig out his catnip toy and open the blinds and open the window. So if the lighting has changed, if the sound has changed, I apologize. The baby comes first. Back to what I was saying. Anya's been serving these four families and it's like an alliance of four organized crime families that have these quarterly meetings. Whoever's hosting has to provide a source of entertainment. So they all have these entertainment slaves and she is the entertainment for the Russian house. Um, and she dances ballet. She was sort of like groomed and captured, I think sometime in her late teens. And now she's well into her twenties. So so she's kind of just given up that she's ever going to get out. And this man, he's not well. He is so cruel, so sadistic, and yet thinks he's like helping her. It doesn't make sense. She's, she's completely given up. She thinks this is gonna be her life. And that is until they give her a new dance partner named Ezra. And he's a little bit different than some of the other dance partners she's had. Not only is he not a ballet dancer, so she has to train him in that. He also just isn't really breaking. He's still got this spark and interest in life that Anya's kind of lost. And he starts bringing that out in her. And Ezra's even becoming protective of her. And they start forming bonds, which is so dangerous in this house. And really that's that could be their downfall. I want to put this on my TBR because otherwise I will not 
finish the series. And I honestly, I'm in love with the series so, so much. So I just want to keep talking about it. So I know it's appeared, like all the different books have appeared in quite a few different videos, but I love this series. It's so dark, so tense. I can't help but be captivated by the series and I need to put this on my TBR so I actually finish the series so I don't put it down in favor of like trying to read something off of my TBR. That's why that's on here. Next up we have Broken People by Elle Mitchell and this is on KU. It's the first in a series but I can't tell based on the structure of the series if it's a proper series or if it's one of those like Elle Mitchell wrote a book and then everyone loved her side characters and she's like I'll write a spinoff. I can't tell. This is a contemporary romance and Elle Mitchell writes emotional stuff so I'm imagining that's going to happen once more here. So Ruby is our heroine and she just feels like good things are kind of like meant for other people. It just always feels like love and something greater are just like out of her grasp. And so she's kind of settling for good enough at this point. She's a writer by day, a bartender at night. In her spare time, she tries to hang out with her friend who is living a pretty enviable life. And she's also watching the guy she's crushing on fall in love with someone else. Everything is just feeling so out of reach for her. And that's until she meets Jake and that fundamentally changes her life. Now in the synopsis, it also says that Ruby is the antihero of her own story. So I don't know if that means she's going to be like unlikable or make bad decisions or if she's kind of a gray character or, or what's going on with that. I thought that was an interesting call out. So I'm really interested to see what that means. I'm putting this on my list because I'm slowly making my way, well, not that slowly, I'm making my way through Elle Mitchell's backlist at a pretty rapid pace. She just, she gets me. It's like she can see into my soul and she's like, what specifically would hurt Baron's heart? And then she writes that. This is the last series I kind of need to get into before I start reading some of the spinoffs that I'm not like quite as excited about because a lot of them are like love stories rather than romances. I want my HEA y'all. So this is kind of like the last, the last hurrah, so to speak, I guess. No, it's not. I don't know what I'm saying. Moving along. Next up, I have Trapped Until You Love Me. And this is by Mila Olson. So this is once again, on KU, first in a series of three books. It's a captive stalker dark romance. So Louisa is going on a camping trip with her brothers in California and she ends up having this chance encounter with a random stranger named Brennan. But it turns out that this encounter that she believes to be random has very carefully been orchestrated by Brennan. He's been planning to meet her for some time and now that he has her in his reach he snatches her away into the wilderness of Canada. So why I want to read this one is I got it for Stuff Your Kindle Day back in June. And I was kind of seeing some parallels between like Take Me With You and Hills of Shiver and Shadows. But I have a feeling that this one's not going to be quite as dark only because when I was looking at the blurb, there's also some indications and some discussion of like someone's got a traumatic past, feeling conflicted emotionally. And so I'm thinking that there might be more attempts on this one to soften who the hero is, make him more sympathetic than like a take me with you, which is like that hero, I don't even know if he qualifies as gray. He is just straight up morally corrupt. I'm always down for captor captive type romances. I want to see what you can do with it. Also, I found out that this author writes primarily in German. So this, these are all translated novels which I didn't know. That's a fun little fact that you also now know. Next up we have Opium Skies and this is by CM Radcliffe. On KU in a proper series of three books and it's a new adult dark romance with themes of drug addiction and drug use. So Hadley is ready to have like the full college experience. It sounds like she lost her mother and that's kind of derailed her or marked her in some way emotionally. And so although she has all these like goals of having fun and forgetting her past, she ends up meeting Ander. Ander lives life moment to moment. And in fact, he lives it from high to high. He's basically bad decisions in the form of a man. So it sounds like these two start out looking for a good time, a fun time and it very quickly becomes dark, toxic. The synopsis even says it becomes explosive. If you listen to what I just said, it sounds nearly identical to the synopsis of Shattered Hearts by Shea Ruby, which if you've been here, you know was a favorite read of mine last year. Absolutely adored it. So I'm seeing some parallels with that. And I was like, ooh, that sounds so good. I've really been liking 
books that explore grief in a much messier way, drugs, alcohol, bad decisions, like there's something about that that's very gripping because you're just mired in the mess. That kind of mess is holding my attention when I'm reading books. It, it was kind of giving me ecstasy vibes a little bit. And I think Nikki and Bookland recommended this one after I had read Shattered Hearts, or I should say after we read Shattered Hearts. She was saying that this one kind of was similar and she thought I would enjoy it. So it's one that I want to give a go. I also think someone that I'm friends with on Goodreads read this recently and it kind of like popped it back onto my radar. So so thank you to whoever that person was. I'm actually gonna read a book I own. And that's Stay With Me by Nicole Fiorina. This is on KU, it's the first in a proper series. It's a dark romance, it's new adult, and I think that there's like mental health themes. So Mia is our heroine and it sounds like she's kind of on this downward spiral and in an attempt to get help and kind of like right herself, she's transferred to a reformatory college in the UK. And I kind of, I'm suspicious of the word college, uh, to be honest, because it kind of sounds like it might be just like a mental institution of some kind, because it's for dangerous and deranged young adults. So that doesn't really sound like a college, does it? Mia's unbothered by this, to be honest. She sounds like has some sympathy, sympathies? Definitely not that. She has some symptoms of psychopathy. So she doesn't really feel anything. She just kind of like keeps herself, keeps her head down and is like, ignores the rest, like, Let's just get through this situation. It goes to crap because she ends up meeting Ollie and she's drawn to him. He's like dark, broody, moody, poet, tattooed type of guy. She knows that he's either going to destroy her or heal her. Those are some very dramatic options there. So uh, <laughs> I want to read this one because it's been on my TBR. Not only just my TBR, but my physical TBR for a very long time at this point. And I was just chatting with one of y'all on my last video that I just uploaded about this book and how it was keeping it was keeping one of y'all's attention after just like having so many books that were not doing it. And then it sort of reminded you of Brick of Our Souls kinds of vibes and that it was like messy and emotional. And so I was like, I feel like that's my sign to read this. Next up, we have The Five by Lily White. This is a standalone. It's a dark romantic suspense thriller. I don't know, Lily White's, she's a unique one. The description's very vague, as most Lily White books are, because she just takes you down a rabbit hole. And, and so to be honest, I don't want a lot of explanation. I know that Sam from Sam Reads a Little said that it was like more of a thriller type where it's like a romance for non-romance readers. The main character here is Rainy, and it sounds like she kind of lives a life of debauchery. Uh, like she kind of has men falling all over her for sex, and there's like drugs and manipulation going on. She's got a lot of secrets as a result. She is in contact with a man named Justin who is a psychologist who is interviewing her because she is the only person that survived a rampage murder at a house party. And so he's trying to figure out how there's all this death and destruction around this young woman. Is it chance? Is it her? From what I've heard, it's wild, it's intense, and I love the psychological insights that Lily White likes to plant in her books, and she does a great job with that. I think because she's got a psychologist, perfect person to be really looking at the psychological like underpinnings and elements that might be going on with Rainy. And Lily White really knows how to make things dark and twisted in a way that feels purposeful and explorative. I have this physically, so I feel like I just, I gotta, gotta read it. This cover is really cool. It's got like, it looks like a car on fire maybe. Anyways, that's the next one I wanna read. Next up, we have Apathy, and this is by L.K. Reed. This is on KU, it's the first in a series, and it's like a mystery, horror, dark romance. It sounds like young women are disappearing from this sleepy small town, and it's causing everyone to kind of turn on each other, accuse one another, point fingers. It feels like you can't really trust anyone. Tyler, our main character, is about to find out that uh, the monsters afoot are very real. So I don't know if that means like, paranormal monsters or like monstrous men are real? I want to know. The reason I wanted to read this one is because I have had a few different people on Instagram that I follow and tend to have similar tastes to have been raving about this book nonstop. And there's like a couple of different people that were also like, oh my god, I need to get to this book. Even when I did a quick perusal of the reviews, we're just like, what the actual heck did I just read? It sounds like it's pretty gripping. I wasn't seeing a lot of negative reviews. It's wild, it's disturbing, what in the actual heck? And that's the kind of books I like to read. Like I like to get done and be like, my brain is soup. Like I said, I'm looking for stuff that pulls me in and this sounds like something that could 
really, really do it. Last one I've got for you, Lunamare by Pepper Winters. This is the first book in a duet that's on KU. It sounds like it's kind of like a darker coming of age romance. It sounds like there's an age gap, maybe some mental health or romantic suspense elements, something along those lines. But it's set in Australia and Aslan is our hero. He doesn't have a very great home life and he's living rough at the moment. And he ends up running into Narita who is 12 at the time that they meet. I think he's 16 and she is very free spirited. Um, her parents are marine biologists, so way different life. They end up meeting because he is saved by Narita during a storm. Her parents end up taking him in, but they kind of have like one rule, which is basically like, leave Narita alone. It's four years later and they're having a hard time adhering to this rule. They don't want to stay away from one another. For Aslan, this can really put his life in jeopardy. He's got some secrets that he wants to keep buried regarding his family and his home life. He wants to keep those down. And also this could really put his home life in jeopardy because if he's doing the hanky panky with Narita, that could mean that he no longer has these people in his life that are more or less raising him. So I initially had this on my radar like a year ago. I had put it on my TBR, had every intention of reading it. My interest had been piqued because I think Jennifer Hartman had mentioned something about it. And there were like a few other authors that had said really great things. I got really sucked in because I thought the cover was beautiful. And it's one of those that has kind of always been on the back burner. It's always like the next book I want to read. I have like a list of books where I'm like high priority, but like after I've read my TBR. This this is one of those and I've just my interest has been reignited because Mystic Box did special editions of this so a lot more people have been reading it recently and it's just it's piqued my interest plus I think I said on my mid-year book freak out tag I need to read something by Pepper Winters. She just feels like an author that I'm like already convinced is a favorite, even though I haven't read a single thing from her. So I want to start with this one and then maybe work my way towards some of her darker stuff because I know that a lot of her other series are kind of like interconnected and stuff. So all that to say, this is one that I definitely need to get to. I've been meaning to get to it. All right, those are all the books that I am hoping to read in July and August. I would love to hear from you. What are you hoping to read? Like, what do we want to get read before the end of summer? Like, what's on our summer TBR? I want to hear what's like, what's keeping your interest? Are there genres that you're like more interested in or like tropes that you've really been eating up? What's been holding your attention? I want to, I want to know. I want to hear all the things. And if you're just like, you know what? No, that's empty head, but I would like to show some support. Uh, totally fair. I'm, I'm with you on that one. Just leave a heart emoji, your favorite color. I want to see it. I want to know. Tell me something about yourself, a fun fact. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I really, really hope I see you on my next video. Bye bye